kingdom colonization. This is our kingdom colonization course. We're going to talk about the ingredients of soul winning. Excuse me for a quick second. Thank you so much. This is our kingdom colonization course. Now, our last three courses have been, for this year, have been kingdom, understanding the kingdom, embracing the kingdom, and kingdom application. So now that we know what the kingdom is, how the kingdom operates, excuse me, and all of the details of the kingdom, we understand all of that. Amen. Glory to God. Now we're going to understand kingdom colonization and what it means to colonize, what it means to colonize. Now, we're going to talk about the ingredients of soul winning. Before we get involved in this word colonization, I want to point out something to you. This word colonization, the word T-I-O-E and should actually means the act of doing. So colonization is the act of colonizing. What does it mean to colonize? It means to extend. A colony is an extension of the kingdom. For instance, we have um, Great Britain has a kingdom, but then they have a colony called the Grand Cayman Islands. They are thousands of miles away but they are a colony. I want to give you another example. There were settlers who sailed from Orleans, France. And when they landed on a new piece of ground, they called it New Orleans. The reason they called it New Orleans is because they sailed from Orleans, France. So now their job in this new place is to transform it. Their job is not to blend in. Their job is not to conform to their ways, but to change it to reflect the home country. To look like where they're from. So they land in a new place to make it look like the country that they're from. So that's why we eat beignets in New Orleans and that's why they eat uh, etouffee and that's why um, they listen to certain jazz and that's why the French quarters look the way it does and that's why they speak Creole or broken French because the language of the home country, the culture of the home country, it looks like France because of they colonized it. I want to let you know that God wants to do the same thing with the earth. He didn't place you on earth to try to work your way to heaven. No, he placed you on earth to transform it so that earth can be a colony or an extension of heaven. That he, it would be as Jesus prayed, that it would be, thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So now I want to bring out some points that are very important. I want to show you how this plan of working with God and evangelism works. We're going to talk about some things very important. The first thing I want to talk about, I'm going to start at number four. We're going to talk about the goal of God. The goal of God is to receive sons. This is God's goal, God's desire, to receive sons. Now we're going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is to birth sons. Glory to God. To birth sons. This is the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to talk about the work of Jesus to save sinners. Through his precious blood, we are saved. Now we're going to talk about this is the work of Christ. Now we're going to talk about your responsibility. Proclaim the, the gospel. That's your responsibility. Now I know I went backwards. I know I started at God's goal. God's desire is to receive sons. That's what God wants. God wants sons. The Holy Spirit's job is to birth sons. The scripture says this here. It says that the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So the Holy Spirit births you into sonship and the Holy Spirit affirms your sonship. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Now, the job of Christ is to take a filthy, wretched sinner and to create a work-free avenue to save you. In other words, where your works don't matter. It is his grace. You are saved by grace through faith. Glory to God. So now, watch what happens. God has a desire to receive sons. The Holy Spirit has a responsibility to birth sons. Jesus has a responsibility to save sinners. You have a responsibility to proclaim the gospel. Here's the reason why I started Baptist. Because let's say that you're not responsible and you're not proclaiming the gospel. If you don't proclaim the gospel, the word of God says that how can they hear without a preacher? So now if you don't proclaim the gospel, now nobody's getting saved. If nobody's getting saved, then we find out that the Holy Spirit is not birthing anybody into sonship. 
if the Holy Spirit is not doing his job and birthing others into sonship, then God doesn't get what he wants. That's your position. If you are out of position, you hold up the whole plan. Excuse me for a second. Glory to God. You hold up the whole plan. You have to understand that God has a plan for you to operate in sonship and to operate and partner with him. So it's important that you understand that soul winning is a position to partner with God. Soul winning is a position to partner with God. Now we're going to talk about some words because you don't see this word colonization in the Bible. But it's all over the Bible. So we're going to talk about some words that show up in the Bible. The first thing that I want to bring out is the word witness. What does it mean to witness? That's a word that means colonization or colonize. It is advancing the kingdom of God. The next word you're going to find in the Bible, disciple. Do you remember seeing this word in the Bible? That is a kingdom word, colonization. The third word that you're going to find in the Bible, preach. What does it mean to preach? The word preach, that is a colonizing word. It means to proclaim. Then you're going to find this word, teach. Do you remember seeing that in the Bible? Teach. That's an ambassador word. That's a kingdom word. That's colonizing. What is the difference between preaching and teaching? I'll write it over here. Preaching is the proclamation to proclaim the gospel. Teaching is to explain. Preaching is to proclaim the gospel. Teaching is to explain the gospel. So you find those words in the Bible. Number five, you find this word proclaim in the Bible. That's another word you're going to find that goes with preaching, but it's still a word you find in the Bible for colonization. And then number six, evangelize. Now, do you remember seeing these words in the Bible? Witness, disciple, preach, teach, proclaim, evangelize. These words are in the Bible because this is the subject God is discussing, colonization, extending his kingdom into the earth to transform it. I want to show you some things that are very important about colonization. These are not religious words. These are not religious words at all. That is not religious. These are kingdom words, government words. These are words that is talking about God extending his kingdom in the earth. So now let's go into some important things, ingredients about soul winning. Ingredients are very important. If you don't have the right ingredients, then you're not going to be able to accomplish what you need to accomplish. The ingredients for soul winning. I want to show you how important ingredients are. Let's say that you get some bad flour that's been outdated for a couple of years and you put it in the cake. If you put that flour in the cake, is your cake going to come out good? No. If you get some eggs that have, that have, that have spoiled and are rotten, is your cake going to turn out good? No. You mean to tell me that I can't have bad ingredients and expect a good cake? But yet we've been wondering why we're not effective at soul winning. We're not effective at leading others to Christ. We're not effective at advancing the kingdom of God and witnessing. We're not effective for one reason. We've been putting bad ingredients in it. So let's find out what ingredients should I have. The first thing I want you to write down, if you're taking notes, is priority. Priority. You've got to have priority. What do you mean by priority? Over in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, it talks about the leaven working its way through the dough or through the bread. That word leaven actually means yeast. It said the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. You are the, the expression of the kingdom of heaven on earth. God is saying you are like yeast. So let me tell you some things about yeast. Number one, yeast is never intimidated by the size of the dough. You are like yeast. It has to be priority. Yeast is never intimidated by the size of the dough. Yeast is never looking at the dough and saying that this is too much dough for me. No, if yeast could think, this is what yeast would be thinking. Yeast will be saying, if I can get in, I can make that dough rise. That's the only thing yeast think about. So instead of you running around talking about how many devils are on your job and how, many, how messed up your family is and how bad off your church is and how bad off, you should be thinking like this. If I can get in, I can make that dough rise. Glory to God. That's good stuff right there. Don't be intimidated by the size of the assignment. No, think like yeast. If I can get in, that person may be bad off. 
The reason we can't witness effective because we always look at them and we don't see it as our priority to get involved. It's not my job. So we talk about how bad the world is instead of us invading the world and operating like yeast. The second point about yeast, yeast never broadcast its presence. Yeast never say, hey, I'm yeast. I'm about to work in this dough. But yet believers always want to be recognized and they always want to broadcast their presence. No, you don't have to broadcast that you're a Christian. You don't have to broadcast that you are a believer. You don't have to broadcast that you're an ambassador of this kingdom. All you have to do is be yeast and quietly work through the dough. Just work your way through quietly, loving on people, presenting the gospel, doing the work but without broadcasting and watch you work your way through the dough and that dough will rise. The third thing about yeast, yeast doesn't work around yeast. You will never know how powerful yeast is as long as yeast stay in the bottle with other yeast. But I guarantee you, if you can take a little bit of that yeast out of that bottle and put it on dough, you will find out the potential of yeast is great. I want to tell you this. Sometimes the reason why we can't see what we are capable of doing is because we're comfortable with being around other yeast. If you are going to be effective as a witness, you are going to have to get around dough. You're going to have to get around something that, that is dead that you have to cause to rise up. You're going to have to make it rise. That's your assignment. It's your priority. Witnessing is your kingdom priority. You have to be like yeast. This is the only thing on my mind. Nothing is more important than witnessing. Not the benefits of the kingdom. Not the blessings of the kingdom. Not the power of the kingdom. My responsibility as an ambassador of the kingdom is my number one priority. The second thing is responsibility. Responsibility is important. Responsibility. Responsibility is important for this reason. Over in Matthew chapter 9, verse 6, it says this here, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth. Jesus didn't come to just bring power, but he came to bring power on earth. Not only bring power and that when he die, he'll take the power back with him and then keep it in heaven. No, he sent the power back with the Holy Ghost. In Acts 1 and 8, it says, after you receive the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power to be witnesses. You have the power. Now you're going to find some other scriptures like Matthew 14 and 14 or Matthew 18 and 27, Mark 1 and 41 and Mark 6 and 34. Those scriptures all talk about one word, compassion. It talks about this one word, compassion. What is compassion? Most people say that compassion is sympathy. Compassion is not sympathy. Sympathy is when you feel sorry for someone. For instance, you see somebody home, homeless, you walk by and you say, oh man, that's messed up. I feel sorry for them. That's sympathy. And that's a good thing because God now has a sensitive touch to your heart. But God wants you to advance past sympathy to compassion. Compassion, it doesn't just mean to feel sorry for them. It means to feel sorry for them, but to also feel the responsibility to do something about it yourself. That's compassion. That's why in those scriptures I just named, you always find out that Jesus was moved with compassion. He was moved to heal the sick. He was moved with compassion to heal the sick. He was moved with compassion to feed them. He was moved with compassion to love them, to make them whole, to deliver them, to do all of these things. He was moved with compassion to free their debts. He was moved with compassion. I want to tell you this, that God is trying to move you with compassion. Now, compassion means you, you feel the responsibility to do something about it. What does responsibility mean? This is what it means. The ability to respond. Responsibility is nothing more than responsibility. To be responsible is to be response able. In other words, if the problem comes your way, God is saying you can do something about it. Don't push it off on anybody else. Be responsible. Witnessing has responsibility with it. In other words, you are response able. You have the power on earth from the Holy Ghost to respond to problems. If they are hungry, they need something to eat, then you give them something to eat. If they need clothes, then you give them some clothes. If they need money, then if you have it, you give them some money. If they need healing, then lay your hands on them. Don't be afraid. You have the power to extend love, to cast out devils, to open blind eyes, to raise the dead, to heal the sick. You have that power. You are response able. 
Now the third, the third ingredient, I like this one. It is skill. If you're going to be effective at soul winning, you're gonna to need to have skill. Over in over in uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 20, Jesus shows up to some men that are fishing and he says that uh, if you follow me, I will make you fishes of men. Soul winning is important. I mean, witnessing is important. It's going to take more than zeal and passion. You know how some people just wake up and say, I want to see people saved. That's fine. That's great. Go out there. Win them. But at some point, you're going to have to develop some skill because it's compared to fishing. And fishing takes skill. Now, I'm not a fishing guy. So I don't know a whole lot, but I know this about fishing. That there are different baits and different lures that you have to use. You can't use the same bait on every fish. You have to use different bait. You have to. Every person you come to are not going to receive you and your stru structure systematic approach. You're going to have to use different baits for different people. That's how fishing works. The next thing that works with fishing is this, that you're going to have to have patience. That's one of the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan of fishing physically because you got to sit out there all day. You got you to sometimes show up at 5 o'clock in the morning and you have to stay there to 12 o'clock in the in 12 o'clock noon that's that's a long time for me and i mean I, I i like fishing but i don't like it like that so god is saying that well, it's the same way with soul winning sometimes you got to work on somebody quit waiting on everybody to get saved the moment you start talking to them sometimes you got to work on them and you might have to work on your co-worker for a year before they give their life to christ but you have to be patient the third thing about fishing very important this is what it talks about it's about quietness. I remember I went on a fishing trip with the men of the church, and when I was out there, I was making so many noise, beating on the thing, singing and singing gospel songs, and they had to stop, and they said, hold up, Bishop, stop. You're scaring off the fish. Fish can tell when you're not quiet. I want to tell you this, that so can souls. When you're out there soul winning, then you're going to have to realize that I am going to have to need quiet time with God. I am going to have to sometimes shut off social media, shut off the TV, shut off everything, get on my face before God, get alone with God, and spend quiet time with God because fish can tell when it's not quiet. The, the fourth thing, very important about, about the skill, is you're going to have to go where the fish at. You, got, you have to know where the fish are biting. For instance, Jesus told his disciples, he said, go to this place, and if they don't receive, then great. Just go ahead and take your peace with you and and go ahead and leave. You don't have to stay there. If they don't want it, then fine. But you can't fish in your driveway. <laughs> you can't walk in your driveway and just start fishing. No, you have to go where the fish are at. Listen, you're not going to win nobody to Christ if you just keep waiting on everybody to come to church. You're going to have to go out where the fish is at. Go where the fish is at so that you can win them to Christ. It takes skill. That's number three. Number four is important. Number four you need vision. What do you mean by vision, Dr. Young? This is what I mean by vision. You need vision. When witnessing, you must have vision and insight to see beyond the present condition of those you are witnessing to. You must have vision and insight. Never disqualify the person that you're witnessing to by looking at what they are now, how they act now, what they're doing now. I mean, nobody would have never known that God would use somebody like me. That God would use somebody with a history like me and a past like me, from a neighborhood like me, from an environment like I came from. God would have never thought that God, I mean, nobody would have never thought that God would use somebody like that. No, because I, I've been to jail. I did time. I did these things. And God, nobody would have never thought that God would use somebody like that. The, the Apostle Paul was the same way. When he was Saul, he persecuted Christians. He killed them. He threw them in jail. He did all of that. Nobody would have ever thought that this would be the God that would write over 75% of the New Testament. That this would be the God that would show up with progressive revelation. And he would be the one to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Paul did that. I want to tell you. When you go up to somebody and you look at their external and you see where they are now and you judge them by that and you don't even witness to them, you don't know who you're passing up. You don't know this may be the next world changer. This may be the next person in the body of Christ that God used to do great things. And you just passed them up because of how they look. And you wrote them off because of how they act. No, you need vision. You need to be able to look at a gang member and see them as somebody delivered. You need to be able to look at a drug addict and 
and see them as a mighty pastor. You need to be able to look at a prostitute and see her as an awesome mother. You have to be able to look at people that are lost and see them through the eyes of God. That's so winning. Now our fifth thing, number five, you're going to need wisdom. Now the wisdom that I'm talking about is you not knowing, having good insight through stuff that you've experienced. I'm talking about the word of God. The word of God is the express wisdom of God. When you're out there witnessing, don't go out there and start sharing your opinion, your idea, your agenda, what you think. You know, well, I think nobody cares what you think. Let me say that again. Nobody cares what you think. What does God say? You have to show up there. That's why you got to know the word of God. You got you to gotta refer back to the word of God. When they try to get you into questions about foolishness, say, no, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about that, but let me tell you what God says. And you stay with the word of God. Witness with the word. Wisdom is important. When you witness with the word, you never have to present your own ideas, your own agendas, or your own um, um, opinions. Number six. Love. That's an important ingredient. I cannot talk to believers enough about love. I mean, believers, church folk, let me talk about religious church folk. They're the most harsh people in the world because they can be so judgmental. And they, they, it was the Romans that crucified Jesus. It was the Jews, Jewish Pharisees, the religious leaders that crucified Jesus. It wasn't believers that were having a soft heart. They were religious people that crucified him. And religion today is still crucified. You have to present love. You present the gospel. It's the most powerful thing on the planet. The gospel is. But, so what you're presenting is powerful. But how you present it is so important. If you don't present it in love, if you show up trying to condemn everybody and judge everybody and point your finger and send them to hell and no, you have to reach them in love. You have to love them. You have to love them. If you don't, you're going to miss the opportunity. See, people will forget what you told them. They'll forget what you did for them. But they'll never forget how you made them feel. Love them. Love them in their conditions. Love them where they are right now. Present this gospel in love. Present the truth in love. You have to love them. The last one. Number seven is power and demonstration. Power and demonstration. What do you mean by power and demonstration, Dr. Young? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20 says this here. It says that the kingdom is not in mere words, but it's in power and demonstration. We don't just present this kingdom. In fact, the proclamation of the gospel or the presentation of the kingdom is not complete without a demonstration of his power. If you're out there in the field and you're talking to people, if you're on your job talking to people and they start talking about their pain in their leg, then you've been talking about a God that can fix any problem. Then you need to be ready to lay hands on them. If you're out there talking about a God that can save, then you need to be ready to lead them to Christ. If you're talking about a Holy Ghost that is amazing, then you need to be ready to lead them to get filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're talking about a God that can heal all sickness and disease, then be ready to put your hands on them. Be ready to cast out devils. Be ready to lay hands on the blind and, and cause the eyes to open and deaf ears to unstop and mute tongues to work. And call, I mean, be ready to do the work. It's your job to present. It's your job to be the presence of God on the earth because he lives in you. But it's his job to release his power and demonstration as you act on the word. So do something. Act on the word. There has to be power and demonstration to go with this gospel. This is a kingdom that, are without that has unlimited potential. It does not have limits. It's a kingdom without limits. Then act like it. Present the gospel. So let me show you. We have priority. These are the ingredients. Responsibility. Skill. Vision. Wisdom. Love. Our demonstration. Now that you have all of this, I want to tell you this. We always look to the kingdom of God to be blessings to us. To be a blessing to us. We want the blessings of the kingdom. If God says that he's going to protect us, then we want to trust the kingdom and have confidence that the kingdom is going to be responsible and protect us. If God says he's going to provide for us, 
then we want to trust the kingdom to be responsible and provide for us. We want to trust the kingdom to be responsible while we lead and live irresponsible lives and the kingdom can't depend on us. It's our job, our responsibility to witness, to advance the kingdom, one heart at a time. One heart at a time. God wants to colonize. How does he want to do it? He wants to extend his kingdom, his presence, his spirit into each and every heart that we come in contact with. And we have to present the gospel. We have to witness. We have to win souls to do it. I want to tell you, get on your job. Don't wait another minute. Yes, the blessings of this kingdom are because this kingdom is great. The benefits of this kingdom is amazing. But the responsibility of this kingdom is my priority. God bless you. Amen.